Holdings uh, Creative. It's an award-winning uh, marketing agency here in Bristol. And uh, our speaker today will be talking about the revolutions of AI. Can AI truly replace um, human connections? Uh, how is AI used on social media? And to what extent can AI be used to instigate crime? With that, I introduce you, James Vincent. Good evening, everybody. Tonight, I want to take you through a journey, through a bit of a modern dilemma. The growing digital divide and the paradox of connection in the world of artificial intelligence. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Let's talk about connection. We've had connections for thousands of years. We've valued those connections. We've worked on those connections. But what happens when a disruptive technology like artificial intelligence comes along and mixes up the norm? Well, we've allowed artificial intelligence to integrate into many different parts of our lives without really understanding what the consequences of that may be. Tonight, I want to talk through a number of subtopics. So, let's dive down the rabbit hole, into Wonderland, and have a bit of a chat about the landscape that we're currently living in. Now, AI is a bit of a buzzword, I'm not going to lie. Everybody's using it. And when I think about AI, I think about that big Fortune 500 company sitting around a boardroom table, and they've handed out the memo for the day, and they've said, we now have artificial intelligence systems. Handshakes and thumbs up and well done to everybody. All the way to my dentist actually saying that their systems have been built with AI. Super concerning, as I was actually sat in the chair when they said that. But it's actually happening right in front of us. But when I actually think about AI, I actually like to go back in time. And I like to remember some of the headlines that we've actually had from IBM, supercomputer from around the world, getting its hands on Urban Dictionary and swearing through its teeth. Oh, press wouldn't have been good that day. Microsoft, building its own AI chatbot, only to have the plug pulled because it started saying some pretty terrible things about the human existence. Or even Facebook, creating their own AI chatbot that learned its own language, so they had to shut it down. Now, we look at that, and it does remind us that this is still a tool. So we've looked at the past. Now let's look at the present. We've seen, when I think of a connection, I think of a relationship. And at the heart of every relationship is trust. Thank you, Dr. Phil. And we value that trust. Now, we've seen relationships change. Over a number of years, digital relationships have been born. We've sent nudges back and forth on Facebook, thinking this was a connection all the way to swiping right on a bio that we barely even read. Don't lie, you've already been there, okay? I have as well. But we've seen something new happen, an AI relationship. I discovered a program, or actually multiple programs, that allow you, through subscription-based services, to actually talk to an AI persona, where half the human is taken out altogether. Now, for the people that are interested in this, preference and all, you can have anything you like. And it's super cheap. The reviews were fantastic. My AI partner is like no other. My AI boyfriend is always there for me. My AI girlfriend never moans. Well, of course it doesn't. It is a piece of software. It does remind me that th this sounds fantastic. We should all be signing up to this. Oh, well, hold on a second. Until I looked at the other side. And I did a little bit of research, and I found this. What happens when your AI chatbot stops loving you back? Well, that's a, that's a toxic relationship when it's happened, isn't it? My AI girlfriend will only break your heart, privacy experts concerned. Oh, yeah, mm, definitely. What we're seeing here are problems. Now, I had a look at this, and I thought, well, what is the problem with this? The problem is it's built by humans. Yeah, I know, surprising, right? And unfortunately, the driver isn't always in your best interest. When I looked into this in more detail, I found that money and data were some of the biggest drivers for them. And it started to change the way that we looked at things. Well, the way we view relationships is going to change forever. Now, I grew up in the day and age of social media, being the forefront of connection 
I grew up in the day and age where you could use dial-up internet, log on to Facebook or Twitter, post anything you like without any consequences at all. I know, it wasn't that long ago. I do actually promise you guys. So it, it reminded me of a story. This is a lovely picture of a family. It's AI, don't worry about it. Mum, dad, son. It's a beautiful picture, isn't it? And it reminded me of a story called Clark's Cube. Scrolling on TikTok endlessly, I'm not going to lie, at one point or another, I stumbled across a video. And this video had 53.3 million views. It was an unsolved murder case. Scary, right? And that was only one of the many videos that I stumbled across. The comments ranged everything from who's reporting on this, thoughts and prayers to the family. I can't believe this is happening in my hometown. Genuine concern, absolutely wasted when it was found out the story was entirely fabricated, created by AI. A writer, a horror A writer, basically made the story, lets them go viral, and then comments on them saying, well, actually, that was me, don't worry about it. Now, I thought about it, the story, the pitch of the videos. I suppose maybe it was done in a light manner. He was just trying to get a little bit of fame and fortune. But what would happen if we combine that with a more malicious intent? Misinformation on a much larger scale. So, as I'm scrolling endlessly through social media, like we all have at some point, I found another video. I found a series of videos talking about debt. People had been posting videos that they'd racked up debt using pay later schemes. Okay, for the people that have never had the opportunity to use one, this is where you can buy something and then spread out those lovely payments. No worries, no concerns. Now, what I found out were these people were posting it in a comedic light. Actually comparing who had the worst debt. And through the echo chamber of social media, they were actually talking about it in a really funny light as to who had the worst debt. Let me show you some of the comments. Bro, you got to pay 3K? 700? Girl, mine was 5,300. They were actually comparing who had the worst. Now, I thought to myself, could this actually get any worse, though? Ah, but it can. The third comment down. We accept pay later schemes. Come treat yourself, girl. This was a brand targeting individuals with money management problems. And through the echo chamber of social media, all they had to do was comment on one video, and the cycle starts. An addiction is there. They can target individuals directly. Now, it did make me think, is this verging on crime? Well, let me show you some. Over the last few years, what we've actually started to see is a number of crimes from AI voice scams, becoming such a problem that one in four people will eventually be affected by this. So much that, by the way, people are actually creating safe words within families to actually protect themselves. You may be saying to me, well, James, <laughs> I think I'm smarter than that. And I get that, fair enough. But this is getting such a problem that only a few weeks ago, we actually saw an individual get scammed out of $25 million because he thought he was joining a boardroom meeting online with his peers, only to find out they were deep fakes. I'm not going to lie, though, the red flags would definitely be raising when someone asked me to transfer $25 million to offshore bank accounts, but it is what it is. So I thought at this point, could I create a scam? That's exactly what I did. I decided to have a go myself. I'm in my villain era, all right? Calm down, all right? <laughs> what you see here is a script written by ChatGPT. It says, hey, mom, I'm in a bit of a bind. I've lost my wallet, and I'm completely stuck without cards or cash. Now, the script is written by ChatGPT, flat. Can't do much with it. But combine that with a voice subscription service that only cost me about $5, I've got an AI scam ready to go. I can start targeting my loved ones, or even better, I can start talking to yours. Pretty powerful stuff. And it made me think about something. It made me think about how trusting we are to machines and software. It's becoming more of a reality than ever before. Something that's happening across Europe is AI therapy, where individuals can sign up to subscription-based services, and they can talk to a therapist at any time of the day. Sounds fantastic, right? We all need a little bit of therapy every now and again. The problem is, this is machine-driven. The responses, the guidance and support is entirely manufactured by software. And it does make me wonder, does that have bias involved with it? And what is the future implications of that? 
We have opened up Pandora's box. If we like it or not, the systems and software are here. We, as a collective, have to learn how to utilize it, how to understand it, and how to protect ourselves and put boundaries in place. Human evolution will be put on trial, if we like it or not. And okay, fair enough, I know it's a bit all doom and gloom, so let me give you a little bit of hope here. We have seen this throughout history, a number of times, okay? From the airplane, the telephone, the internet, and the computer that we were all kind of scared of at one point. We've overcome this as a collective. So, let's commit to making a new era of digital connections. One that is built on trust, empathy, and shared human experiences. But it does raise the question, what is the future of connection? in the world of artificial intelligence. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a lovely evening.